Hi, welcome to the video on Ansible to automate IBM Cloud. In this demonstration, you would see the Ansible collections which are there to automate IBM Cloud resources. How you can use the IBM Cloud API key as a uh, credential within Ansible Tower so that you can securely automate uh, IBM Cloud resources. And finally, I will uh, demonstrate uh, the creation of a RHEL 8 instance in IBM Cloud. So let's get started. IBM Cloud is a certified cloud service provider for Red Hat. And uh, you can provision Red Hat Enterprise Linux solutions uh, within IBM Cloud. And it is not just limited to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. You can also uh, confidently deploy OpenShift and many other Red Hat solutions on IBM Cloud. Now, how do you automate the deployment of resources in IBM Cloud? For that, we have an IBM Cloud collection, the name IBM.Cloud collection. Currently, it is available in Ansible Galaxy. And uh, going forward, uh, many of these collections would be certified and available in Ansible Automation Hub, which is part of the Ansible Automation Platform subscription. And uh, these collections are deployed as Ansible-Galaxy collection install the collection name. And as I'm using Ansible Tower for this demonstration, I'll be using a requirements.yaml file to pull in this collection. Now to configure the IBM Cloud API key, you can connect to the IBM Cloud console, obtain an IBM Cloud API key, then map that API key to a Tower custom credential. And this is the screenshot of uh, how you can create a custom credential within Ansible Tower and map the IBM Cloud API key, which is IC underscore API underscore key to the field uh, which you create inside Ansible Tower custom credential widget. And uh, the benefit of creating a custom credential is uh, then uh, yeah, the credential will be securely stored inside the Tower PostgreSQL database. And uh, if you use this as part of an environmental variable or an extra var, it will be clear text when you execute that uh, automation artifact or playbook. So always recommended to create a Tower custom credential to encrypt the sensitive information. And within the Ansible playbook, uh, when you use the IBM Cloud collection, uh, you will actually be uh, referencing that collection uh, using a requirements.yaml file. And inside the requirements.yaml file, you mention the source of your IBM Cloud collection, which is galaxy.ansible.com. And uh, for the demonstration, I have a variables file in the name watch.yaml, which has some of the uh, variables like name underscore prefix, which will prefix the uh, name rel8 for all the resources which you create. And the virtual server instance profile is cx2-2x4, which is two CPUs and uh, four GB of memory. The SSH public key, which you need to inject inside the instance, the IPv4 CIDR block, as well as the zone, which is US South 3. Uh, the region is Dallas. So uh, the playbook will also create uh, the subnets, the SSH keys, uh, then the virtual server instance, and finally the floating IP address. So all of these modules are part of the IBM Cloud collection. And I'm actually going to demonstrate the provisioning of a RHEL 8 virtual server instance in IBM Cloud. First and foremost, let's log into the IBM Cloud console, which is at cloud.ibm.com. And if you go to the VPC and look at the overview, the virtual private cloud overview would uh, give you information about using a command line interface to get many of this information. So in my demo server, I have deployed IBM Cloud command line interface. And uh, as many of you know, we need to choose an image to deploy uh, it as a cloud instance in the uh, cloud provider. So to get the image details, you can use IBM Cloud IS images uh, command. So IBM Cloud IS would actually list you all the infrastructure services related uh, resources. So coming back here, if you look, um, I have actually uh, checked IBM Cloud IS images and I'm 
going to look for Red Hat based certified images and you would see uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 uh, images within IBM Cloud. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to use uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.1 and this is the image ID and this image ID will be used within the playbook. Now, uh, with regards to the playbook, I have a GitLab uh, instance which is locally deployed and uh, within the GitLab, I have an IBM Cloud uh, project and the IBM Cloud project has the WALS file which I showed earlier and the playbook which is create.yaml so this is the uh, main playbook which reads the watch.yaml file configures the virtual private cloud subnet ssh key and finally the virtual server instance and within the virtual server instance we are using an image as you see here and this image id uh, ending with a109 is what we actually saw here Right. So I'm going to deploy a rel 8.1 uh, instance and the same project within GitLab is basically made available inside Ansible Tower as you see here IBM Cloud VSI. Uh, this is a GitLab uh, SCM URL and uh, the playbook create.yaml is basically used uh, from that project. And uh, the IBM Cloud API is actually uh, mapped as a custom credential. So if you go to credential types, I have an IBM Cloud credential type. And these are the fields. So the environmental variable IC underscore API underscore key is mapped to the field IC API key. And using this custom credential, I already created a credential named IBM dash cloud. And uh, the cloud API key is given and it is stored uh, securely in the PostgreSQL database. So let me just quickly go and show you uh, whether I have a virtual private cloud already available in my IBM cloud. Um, checking the VPC output, currently you see the VPC uh, doesn't exist. So when we deploy the virtual private cloud via Ansible, uh, you would see it creates VPC, subnet, floating API, and finally the virtual server instance. So let's get uh, started. I go here and uh, choose the template to deploy the IBM Cloud instance, which is a virtual server instance. And let me click on launch. So while it is getting launched, first it will actually do a project sync to check whether a new version of the playbook is available. And once the project sync is over, it would start running the playbook. And the first thing which it does as part of the playbook is uh, creating the virtual private cloud, the VPC. So as you see here, uh, this is my playbook. It first creates the virtual private cloud, then creates the subnet followed by SSH key, then the main instance, which is virtual server instance. And it uses the VPC ID, the subnet ID, the SSH key, and the image. And using these resources, it creates a virtual server instance. And after virtual server instance, it creates a floating IP address and prints the floating IP uh, uh, as the final task. And in between, it creates a security group to allow SSH access so that we can uh, access the instance over SSH and verify that the instance is up and running. So let's see what is the current status. It created the VPC and the VPC subnet is being created. So let me go and uh, refresh this. So you should momentarily be seeing a new VPC uh, in here, uh, which should be prefixed with rel 8.1. Uh, because rel 8.1 was basically a uh, prefix name which we gave. So rel 8.1-VPC in the region Dallas. Going to subnets, you should see a subnet already being created. It currently uh, has IP range 10 to 40, 120.0, uh, 128.0, then uh, floating IP is not yet created. Uh, it is still uh, creating the VSI virtual server instance. So going to the virtual server instance, you should see 
uh, rel 81 dash vsi is about to be started uh, the profile is cx port 2 x which is 2 cpus and 4 gb ram and the private ip is 10 to 41 and uh, once the floating ap is created you would see that floating ap uh, being discovered here so let's see the status of the ansible tower okay it is creating the floating ap address so let's go here and check the floating ap uh, it should be momentarily ready uh, floating ap's yeah you see the address 5211721198 so i just copied that and uh, and if you go back to virtual server instance the same floating ap should be bound to this instance so looking at the ansible tower you see the uh, job template execution has been successful and it says the IP address is 52.1172.198 so let's try to log in um, I already have the SSH private key in my uh, local machine so I'm trying to SSH because the security group allowed SSH access we should be able to log in now uptime it's about one minute and let's check uh, the version of uh, RHEL which is RHEL 8.1 and uh, uh, look at the CPU configuration you have two CPUs and memory is around close to 4 GB yep so that was my demonstration of how to use Ansible to automate IBM Cloud uh, what we did was we used the IBM Cloud collection which is available in Ansible Galaxy and uh, use that to uh, provision a virtual private cloud, subnet, uh, SSH key, uh, floating IP and a virtual server instance. So uh, go and make use of the Ansible uh, collections which are available to provision this IBM cloud and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.